If I wanted someone to moralize with me, I wouldn't have come across no ocean to visit with you. My wife does a much better job of moralizing than you do. The fact remains, if you don't give me those 12 H-bombs, I'm gonna drain your gold for you. That's right, man. 12 H-bombs or I drain your gold for you. I don't think I like the way you handle it. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> this is the most outlandish film you've made. You think so? Yes. That's my brother's favorite. It is? Yeah, he said you've never made one close to that one. You well, Babo, Babo to me was a lot of fun because it also got me a, a Guggenheim. Right. Because it was, most of the critics at a screening room just walked out after 10 minutes, mm -hmm. and one guy stayed there, and he's the only one who wrote about it, and he loved it. And he, he was in The New Yorker. Right. And that put it on the map. And that one had a little run down on Bleecker, but not at the Bleecker Street, another theater down the street. And uh, I said, Jesus, I, can, I, I guess I can make a film. There it is. Mm -hmm. How the fuck did I do it? You know, the cameraman had had camera, but he'd never shot anything before. Mm -hmm. You'd done you done, done some things before that, though. You were messing around with shorts, and or was that? Yeah. Uh, uh, the Civil War thing. The Civil War thing was before Babu 73? Oh, yeah. So you just shot that footage, had it. Ball's Bluff, it was called. Right. <laughs> the Battle of Ball's Bluff. You know, Bluff. Paul, you might find this interesting. There was a theater called the Charles Theater on Avenue B, mm -hmm. where once a year you could bring in a film and put it on a stack of films and sit there till it played. You could be there for days, mm -hmm. it could come in an hour, it depends on the guy upstairs. Mm -hmm. And that was great. That was a real democratic mm -hmm. film festival time, the mm -hmm. Charles, and it was a big place. It was great. Everybody was there, mm. you know. That's great. So then you took those pieces, put it into No More Excuses. Where's the rest of that ball's bluff? Don't know. No. Lucky I found some of this stuff. Right. There you have it, Chad. How is that for an analogy of the situation? The generals were in New York. Mm -hmm. That was a parade. To me, that saved the movie, is having the real generals. Mm -hmm. That's always nice when you can mix, just, you know, mix things together, things, real happenings, real situations. Medium with your, cool. Right. Was, it, was that the first time that you saw that done? No. I mean, no. It's been done forever. Yeah. Especially the neorealist, mm -hmm. whatever that, you know. What were the films that you were seeing around that time that were making you, that were getting you excited? French. Right. Italian, Rossellini. Right. Uh, then when Godard hit, mm -hmm. with Breathless, and Truffaut, it was like, wait a minute. Right. Thank God. 400 blows, stuff like that. You just say, hey, I mean, they didn't have any money either. Right. But generally, uh, Preston Sturgis, mm -hmm. somebody turned me on to him. I fell in love with him. Mm -hmm. And Ron Rice, he made a film called Flower Thief with the guy who played the president in Babylon 73. Mm -hmm. That's where I first saw Taylor Mead. Mm -hmm. And I said, if I'm ever going to have a president of the United States, that's it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we used to have to wake him up in the morning and he was outrageous. We'd be in the middle of a, setting up a little shot, and he'd be trying to pick up a paratrooper, you know, down the street and mm -hmm. give him his phone number. It was unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And we went down to Washington and, and had a good time down there. Kennedy was in Europe, mm -hmm. and that's how we were able to get near the White House. Uh, the, the security was lax. It's just a lot of luck. Right. And a little tiny camera and a bunch of people, like this many, having fun. Right. If it's kept where it belongs, between the two people involved. But when it's coming out of 19 factories, there's no turning our backs. Now the insecurity council meets tomorrow morning. I want the red Siamese out of the United States nation. How does the Guggenheim thing work? After Babo, the critic who lo loved it, mm -hmm. Brendan Giller's name was, turns out to be on the selection committee mm -hmm. for the Guggenheim. And he called me up and said, you're going to get one. And I said, how, did you, how do you know? And he said, because I'm on the board. And hung up on me. So they give you cash to just? 
back then, Paul, that was grand. major. Right. That was like a that was like rich. Right. And you've got to show something for it. Uh, what did I do? Uh, I gave them credit on Putney Swope because mm -hmm. I was writing. It gave me I didn't have to work a job mm -hmm. for a little bit. And uh, National Endowment gave me money once, and I, I said I was going to make a. F oh, you told me this. Tell yeah. me this one again. <laughs> about vegetarians in Alaska. <laughs> I haven't handed that one in yet. <laughs>